Australian Prime Ministers are known for a lot of things. Sculling beer, eating onions, doing the wombat wobble. But on December 17th, 1967, something unexpected happened to one of Australia's leaders. Our Prime Minister went for a swim in the ocean and never came back, disappearing without a trace. Great search is being made for Mr. Holdoff, Potsy, Victoria. It was like being inside a washing machine. Very rough. However, no official announcement has been made as to the fate of the Prime Minister. Although I could see the danger perhaps more than he could. It is feared that the Prime Minister has drowned. The following video is brought to you by The Hanser. If you're after a film emulation program that'll turn your videos into nostalgia, then you've come to the right place. Boosting 63 cinematic film profiles, a host of features like bloom, halation, and adjustable grain, Dehancer is a bloody rip of a program. You can use my code pat underscore franco for a 10% discount on their products. It was late 1960s. B. Johnson was president, and Australia had introduced conscription to fight in the Vietnam War. It was a fascinating time. The booming post-war economic period of the 1950s was over, Sean Connery's James Bond had hit theatres, James Bond. and hippies around the world were smoking joints and dropping LSD to Beatles tunes. It was a time of assassinations, spies and conspiracies. The world was in a tumultuous period known as the Cold War. Harold Holt became Australia's 17th Prime Minister on the 26th of January 1966. Holt was elected leader of the Liberal Party after Sir Robert Menzies resigned, who had served a record 16 years as Prime Minister. For those of you who are unfamiliar with Australian politics, the leader of a party is voted in by its members, and not the people, and there is no cap on how long they can stay in power for. Interestingly, Australia went through a lot of changes under the Holt government. The country changed its currency from the old British system of pounds and shillings to the current world of decimals and dollar dues that we're familiar with today. Under the Holt government, substantial changes were made to the White Australia policy, which was a racist legislation aimed at forbidding non-Europeans and moving to Australia. It was also under Harold Holt that Australia held arguably its most important referendum, where Australia unanimously voted in favour of including Indigenous Australians in the national census and allowing the government to make special laws for First Nations people. Now, a common misconception about this referendum was that it meant recognising Indigenous Australians as people and not as a part of the flora and fauna, which actually isn't true. It did, however, have a huge impact in ending racist policies of the past and recognising Indigenous rights, initiating much needed social and political change. Holt was also a strong supporter of Australia's involvement in the Vietnam War. He was good mates with President Johnson and famously said that Australia is all the way with LBJ. However, by 1967, public tide was starting to turn against Australia's involvement in the Vietnam War, and the country saw waves of protests against Australia's involvement. Now, speaking of waves... It was Sunday the 17th of December. Christmas festivities were in full swing, and it was a hot summer's day. The Australian, a newspaper ran by the owner of unbiased journalism in the world, Rupert Murdoch, ran an article titled, Does Harold Holt Swim Too Much? An eerie coincidence for the day of his disappearance but it is unknown whether he actually saw this. Holt was a keen swimmer and spear fisher. Here's a photo of him giving a fish a kiss. He loved spending time in the ocean and reportedly had a big ego around his swimming abilities. He could take all the political digs in parliament, but if you told him to swim between the flags, you'd never hear the end of it. A few months prior to his disappearance, Holt suffered a near-death experience on the same beach he went missing, having to be pulled ashore before turning purple and vomiting a large amount of seawater. At age 59, he also had a poor shoulder, and was advised to stop exerting himself physically. At 11.15am, Holt set off in his maroon Pontiac from his beach house. With him was Marjorie Gillespie, a family friend who Holt had actually been having an affair with, her daughter, as well as two family friends. At around midday, Holt suggested a stop off at Cheviot Beach for a swim. Despite visible currents and rough conditions, Holt did not hesitate to enter into the water, swimming out far into the ocean even though the others thought it was too dangerous to swim. The only other person in the water was his friend Martin Stewart, who decided to stay close to shore due to the rough conditions. Harold seemed to be enjoying himself, not realising that he's been taken out. Then, within what's been described as like a leaf being taken out, Harold Holt was seen to emerge momentarily on the crest of a wave, only to be sucked under. It was the last he would ever be seen alive. Mr Stewart told police he saw the Prime Minister dive, 
but he failed to resurface. Mr. Stewart said he made a short search before sounding the alarm. Dozens of police, search and rescue squads and divers have been rushed to the area and have been searching since two o'clock. Light craft have been braving the heavy seas near Portsea and several aircraft have been in the air constantly. Officials say the sea search is hampered by heavy rolling seas. Over the coming day, the search continued to no avail. The conditions were rough and equipment was limited. Cheviot was no ordinary beach. Beneath its picturesque coastline lay strong and unpredictable currents, which had taken swimmers in similar fashion years prior. On the evening of December the 18th, not even two days after his disappearance, the Governor-General ended Holt's commission as Prime Minister. He was presumed dead. The next day, John McEwen became the 18th Prime Minister of Australia. On the 22nd of December, a memorial service was held in Harold Holt's honour, which was attended by 2,000 people, including US President Lyndon B. Johnson and Prince Charles. The same day, the search for his body was significantly scaled back due to poor weather, and by January 5th, 1968, the search was called off. To this day, Harold Holt's body has never been found. It is known as a swim that needed no towel. Now it's quite a big deal for a country's leader to pass away, let alone disappear. So naturally, a number of different theories have emerged on what actually happened to Harold Holt. The leading theory is that Harold Holt drowned, that he was swept out in a rip with an injured shoulder and an overconfident swimming ego, and was taken into the depths of the ocean, and that his body was presumably lost at sea or eaten by a shark. A coronal inquest in 2005 confirmed this theory, but that's too boring for the naysayers out there. Theory number two is that Harold Holt committed suicide. By 1967, the tides were turning on Harold Holt's political career, no pun intended, with public support for the Vietnam War dwindling. The theory is that Harold Holt knowingly allowed himself to be taken out. The evidence for this is that a junior cabinet member came out afterwards saying that Harold Holt had previously talked to him about his mental health challenges. However, everybody in Harold's close circles said that he showed no sign of any state of depression. And on top of this, suicide by drowning is an extremely difficult task, as your body naturally fights against it. Theory number three is that Harold escaped to France. An author in the 1970s claimed that Harold Holt went under the water, swam around to the other side of the rock face, was then picked up by an army guard, and escaped to France with his mistress. Now there is very little evidence to support this, and on top of that, it would be very difficult to swim around the rough conditions of Cheviot Beach. Theory number four is that Harold was picked up by a Chinese submarine. The theory goes that Harold Holt was secretly a spy for the Chinese Communist Party and had been spying for their government since the 1940s. However, it would be very difficult for a submarine to reach the shallow waters of Cheviot Beach and go completely undetected, especially considering it is right near an army base. Holt's wife Sarah also stated that Harold can never be a communist spy because he didn't like Chinese food which I think is the strongest indication of a leader's foreign policy. Joe Biden does not like sweet and sour pork. Paul Keating, on the other hand, well, he's always down for some dim sim. Running around the Pacific Islands with a lay around your neck handing out money, which is what Penny does, is not foreign policy. Theory number five is that the CIA killed Harold Holt. The theory goes that Harold Holt considered pulling Australia out of Vietnam, so the CIA needed to take him out. However, this theory contradicts itself, as Holt was clearly in support of Vietnam, being good mates with the LBJ. And also, the next Liberal Prime Minister John Gorton took Australia out of Vietnam anyway. And finally, theory number six is that Harold Holt was taken by aliens, which seems like the most plausible option when looking at some of the evidence that supports these theories. All theories aside, the disappearance of Harold Holt does raise a few questions, mainly why was Holt so keen to go into the rough conditions? Was this his ego calling or something else? And most importantly, what happened to his body? It is extremely rare for a country's leader to simply vanish without a trace. And I'm not sure if we will ever know the answer. The Holt disappearance has turned into a bit of an urban legend. and has actually become a bit of a national joke. Somebody even had the bright idea to name a swimming pool after Harold Holt. Which, yeah, look, I don't know who the fuck did that. I love how when a US president dies, countless documentaries, movies, books, and conspiracy theories are made, and when an Australian Prime Minister disappears while swimming, yes, simply doesn't just die, but disappears. We laugh about it and name a swimming pool after him. But I think that's what makes Australia so great. 
Our elected officials aren't God's representation on earth. They DJ, play handball with kids, and then tackle them while playing footy. They are politicians of the people. Just look at Peter Dutton eating a Dagwood dog. All jokes aside, the disappearance of Harold Holt has been etched into our national conscious as a bizarre and a random tragedy. Whether this is an unsolved mystery or an accidental drowning is still up for debate. I'll let you decide.